Hello and welcome to JSI's latest community challenge. Our category this time is aquatic aircraft. I am joined by Biva. Hey guys. And we are going to look through your submissions for this challenge. Now this one on the screen has been built by me, I must admit. My name is Charles Lizard and I have built this aircraft. We won't be scoring this because I built it. I just wanted to demonstrate what sort of thing we might be looking for. So this is the Hughes H4 Hercules. It is a massive aeroplane designed, obviously. Well, not an aeroplane, it's a flying boat. So lands on the sea, takes off on the water. This is an aquatic aircraft. We could also be seeing maybe some helicopters, maybe, I don't know, whatever else you could imagine. Toad gliders that you could use for your water sports. Um, what other aquatic aircraft could you think of, Bibba? Oh man, you don't have to ask me that question because <laughs> I just think about boats. Uh, yeah, me and Bibba, we, we like our boats. JSI is a, is a boat company, so this is a bit out of our remit, but we'll do our best to judge every contestant fairly and responsibly in our usual four categories of aesthetic, charm, creativity and functionality. So, our first submission is from Sergeant Yambag. It is the RP-10V series and it seems to be some sort of naval patrol aircraft. It's amphibious, you can see it here on the land. Bibba, what did you think of the design of this one? Uh, to be honest, I think it looks amazing. I love the interior of it and uh, yeah, like overall it was nice to fly it and yeah I, I it's very detailed it's amazing and uh, sergeant J. yambag is an amazing creature yeah he's obviously fairly well he's new to these competitions at least but he definitely seems to be a really skilled builder you can see the landing gear and that is all really nicely articulated and, and animated and it functions really well. It took off nicely from the ground and we'll see how well it lands and takes off in the water later to run. But like you say, the design of it is uh, quality. You know, I really like the look of it. It reminds me of, you know, the old naval Nimrods and that in the, in the UK Air Force. Do you know what feature it has that I was kind of surprised? No, what feature is that? It was a uh, windscreen. No, like in windscreens, it had actually windscreens. Like wipers. This is it. It had. Oh, I might miss that one. <laughs> pretty impressive. I, I'm pretty sure it was that plane that had the windscreens. I have to check it out, see if we can see it in the footage in the background. <laughs> that is really cool. It's really easy to fly. Um, plenty of, uh, what do you call it, autopilot functionality. It's obviously four jet engines pushing it along at a rapid pace. Plentiful range. I don't think you have to worry about refueling in this one. Do you like the design of it? I do like the design of it. Like I say, it's really reminiscent to me of the old uh, RAF yeah. naval patrol yeah. things. Like I say, I don't think it's based on a design. I think it's it's imagined from Sergeant Yambag's head. Maybe he's been inspired by a few different designs, but I really, really like it. We'll see some of the features later that I think make it a really quality build from the interior to, to certain elements. But first, we're intercepting the Hughes H4 Hercules. It has no problem catching up to this massive plane. Look at this, my piloting skills put to the test. <laughs> I love the wing design of the plane. That's it, it's really well proportioned. Oh, look at the shadows, oh my god. <laughs> oh, it puts puts it to scale, doesn't it? This crazy. plane is like by no means small, but compared to the Hercules, you know, it's hard to tell. Okay, now we're going to test whether this thing actually floats because obviously it has to float to be an aquatic aircraft. So we're going to go in, I've targeted that lake down below us and after a quick cockpit tour we're going to fly down there and see if this floats and lands well. Look at all this functionality, what a realistic cockpit isn't it? Yeah it is and it's really cramped but it is how it should be. I'm... Exactly, yeah, yeah yeah, you don't want to it's definitely sort of military design, isn't it? You don't. There's no sense of comfort, and the aesthetic, I think, mirrors the purpose of this aeroplane. I mean, it's got this fancy jamming equipment in the back and all sorts. So, everything you might need from sort of a naval patrol ship. So here we go. What do you reckon, Bibo? Do you think I landed it first time? Uh, yeah. You're a good. You're a skilled pilot, better than me. Uh, so. you're, you're optimistic. Yeah. 
cutting it fine. <laughs> Those trees are coming up first. Oh, oh. oh going to hit the bank. No. Yeah, look at that. Amazing. Now, what I really like about this plane is that it doesn't have floats underneath the wings. Instead, the wings fold down ever so slightly and the floats are just on the end of it, which really gives it some nice roll stability whilst it's in the water. But it still sticks to a very sleek military design. I love it. I love the colour scheme as well, it's like some sort of mad penguin. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I also love the colour color scheme. Oh my god, I can't thought. <laughs> so yeah, we have rated this on functionality, charm, creativity and aesthetics. Here are the scores. Now look at this, oh. our first entrant and it's already off the blocks with massively high scores. Yeah. Nothing lower than a 7. 999, 888, all over the place, isn't it? Really, really high scores, really well done, Sergeant Yambag. A fantastic first entrance to GSI's Community Challenges. Look, starting off our competition with a round 100. What do you, what do you make of that, Biba? Yeah, it's, it's truly deserved. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So our second contestant is Jay Mulvey Free with his HE1 Exploration Aquatic amphibious helicopter now i really like this it's really quirky isn't it yeah it's uh, really blocky as well but he's <laughs> tried his best and uh, i have to be honest it's a nice entry absolutely i think the biggest problem with it is sort of in its controllability now you might notice it likes to fly sideways and i think that's because the tail rotor is too close to the center of mass so in order to stop it spinning it's applying torque and that torque is pushing the helicopter sideways. So for future, J Mulvey, put your tail rotor a bit further back and that'll solve that. Now, the other issue with it, as you might have noticed, Biba, is it doesn't float in yeah. a traditional manner. It likes to float upside down. Yeah. <laughs> Which could be a, a little bit of an issue. So it's a sort of a one-time use kind of thing. The scores, what do you reckon? 50. So I have to say, nice try. I hope you progress and join our next community challenge. Yeah, Bib is right. It's a really decent attempt. But yeah, J Mulvey, good, good effort. You might see that Picker has joined us in our scoring and he's been a little bit harsh once in aesthetics and functionality when I thought it was quite cute. It goes to show that even though this is not the most functional and not the most aesthetically pleasing craft, it's still scored really quite well in creativity and charm. So if you are an aspiring young builder, do not be put off by the level of quality of certain builds. You never know what might appeal to us in terms of creativity and charm. I also have to say that this community challenge have a different level of quality than we are used to. Absolutely, a lot of the uh, contributions are really, really high quality and I think we will see that in this, our third contestant. This is Tallers with his Curtis N9 float plane. What did you think of this, Biba? I absolutely love it. It's a recreation and uh, he has done an amazing job on it, as usual. I'm a big fan of his work, so yeah, what to expect. Yeah, I, I hear Tales is a little bit of a, a Stormworks celebrity, <laughs> although I've not really checked out his stuff before. I think I think people say Tails, but I don't know. Oh, I, I, al I always say, have said Tails, <laughs> but... Fair enough. <laughs> I know Tales is a, is a company in the UK that I work with, and we call it Tales. <laughs> uh, but if you yeah. could call it, we'll call it Tails. I mean, I'm sure... He's a little it's fox, tails. a little orange fox with two tails. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's what he it, wants to be called. Yeah, but I have to say, it's a it's a simple design, plain, it's easy. Uh, yeah, it has amazing detail work. I love how it looks. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, now it's approaching the water, so. Yeah, there we go, the eagle has landed. Now, like you say, it's quite simple, but the way that he's achieved all of these de little details is really quite complex because I feel like he's used a lot of fancy XML edited parts to achieve these deliberate effects. I mean, the walls of the cockpit, for instance, are like really, really thin and the pipes between the wings are clearly custom made. Look at these details, like the amount of work that's gone into making something but it could have been quite simple into something that's got, uh, you know, hundreds of little, little perfections. 
Yeah. Is impressive, and I think that's what differentiates Talos from or Tails from um, mm -hmm. a crowd. Yeah. It's space for two. You got your passenger up front, as is traditional in this sort of aircraft. And yeah, I'm I'm impressed by it. I I don't know how I feel about uh, military recreations in terms of this. Like they don't they don't have that charm factor that certain other creations do. But oh, here we go. Can it make it out of the water before the mountain comes? We'll soon find out. Dun, 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 dun. It's going good, though. Doing all right. Oh, oh, we're free we of the water. The mountain is quickly coming up, though. <laughs> ah, panic just about. There we go. You don't see this drama from a boat review, do you? So this is one of the uh, the benefits of an aircraft challenge. So we're off, though. Yeah. It it handles well. Like it's very nimble, and I think that's reflective of a really accurate recreation. Here we go. Scores really really high in aesthetics and functionality a little bit lower in creativity because as you said it is a recreation a little bit lower in charm as well just because it's not got that massive character factor right our fourth entrance is from one of our own it's from get this what's that and it is a vanguard engineering proto hybrid a cranoplan mark zero quite the mouthful now this is a very early version of this crane i i, I believe um as an Ekrano plan, another type of aquatic aircraft, it's supposed to just fly slightly above the water level, isn't it? But he's not implemented that sort of level of control those systems at the minute, so quite often it jets off into the sky and explodes soon after, apparently. What did you think of the design of it, Biba? Uh, I love the design of it because I love the wing shape. I Yeah, it's kind of my type of design when you're going to do it like out of your head because it's kind of future futuristic stealthy uh but i think uh this is just his like how can i say uh the first stage just, of yeah, building just it a prototype isn't it yeah. yeah yeah absolutely uh i think that shows a little bit but the design like you say the the shaping and 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 that sort of the vision is there and i'm excited to see where this develops and what it develops into, because I know he's got a couple of versions of it in the works, and I'm sure once they're all polished up and published, they'll be absolutely quality Vanguard Engineering slash JSI products. So something to look forward to there. In the meantime, it flies fairly well, surprisingly well, given that it's not really got wings per se. The only issue is it does run out of fuel quite quickly, and in its current form, it requires infinite electricity to, to get going. But for a prototype, not too shabby. So my favorite part about this plane overall is actually the design of it because it has potential. Yeah. Uh, to be an amazing creation. And I also want to say, say that the color scheme of it is kind of blend. Uh, put more some details, you know. It will yeah, be a, maybe um, a flash of orange or, or yellow here and there. Give yeah. it some highlights, that could be cool. I think it's a, it's a creative approach. I think a couple of us in the server said it was a little bit Star Trek-y. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like it. I kind of like it uh, a lot. So, yeah. yeah. Definitely very unique. We've not seen anything like it before. Now, it is inspired by some real-life aquatic plans, but it's scaled up and, like, fit for use in Stormworks because it can carry, you know, it can rescue people and carry a little bit of cargo as well. Here it is, yeah. running out of fuel <laughs> as I try and land it. <laughs> Here's the interior. Again, a little bit bare bones, but it's got some interesting rope detailing at the back, which is where you, you'd store your luggage, and it's got a little table. And yeah. I like the lighting as well. Yeah, it's yeah, cool. the lighting is really good, and I have to also say that every time I approached the water, it kind of uh, went front diving, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Uh, very difficult to, to control it yeah. in its current form because there's, there's, there's no automation or anything to help keep it level. It's all flying by the seat of your pants and that sort of ends in tears quite often. <laughs> That's right. why it got like five functionality for me, the low score. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, me and Pika seem to agree with four and three in, in that field. Whereas in the other fields, he scored quite well. A grand total of 77 is nothing to shrug at. He's done really, really well. Not bad. Looking forward to seeing it fully developed and ready to go. Right, our second aquatic helicopter. This one is from Era Theta. 
It is the TGB Reconnaissance Heli number one. And I really think this one is really, really cute. I really love it. I gotta admit, Bibba, I got a soft spot for this one. Yeah. Uh, I also have to say that Vera, uh, uh, when he joined our community for a while ago, I couldn't build a lot. And he has developed quite much, I would say. Exactly. And that, we really love to see that, don't we? As people develop, like in these competitions and just in general is really the best part about being in JSI is watching that happen. Exactly. So uh, again it's really simple, it's really easy, uh, the functionality of it is really great as well. So, But I have to say um, he he could progress some more and uh, yeah it's, it's just quite blocky in my opinion but uh, the functionality yeah. is really good. I would Except say. The next steps, I think. Yeah, some more more detail, more definition to the shape. But I really like. I kind of enjoy the simplicity of it. Like, there's nothing there that doesn't need to be there. Like, everything there is fulfilling its purpose, and everything there is doing it fairly well. Again, it has a similar issue to Jay Mulvey's helicopter in that the tail rotor is too close to the center of mass, so it does like to fly sideways. But as this brief test flight will demonstrate, it's fairly maneuverable and fairly controllable. Yeah, so simple working creation. It's yeah, and, and it floats. It just goes to show you can make a helicopter that floats. And I have to say, Era, I know that you love green and red. <laughs> oh no, I'm having flashbacks to that carpet on the hotel barge. <laughs> Uh, here we are, some scores. Really, really well done, this era, because these are some really fantastic scores for a new builder like yourself. Plenty of charm, plenty of creativity. The aesthetics, letting it down just a slightly little bit. The functionality needs a little bit of work. I think I really enjoyed the functionality on this one, apparently. He gave it 8 out of 10, so clearly he's recognising the skill and the effort that you've put into this. So, 75 overall. Really well done. Right, on to another big flying boat now. This is from That Frog Curtis, and it is the Tara Tarapiro, hey? I don't know. Tara. Something Tara, like that. Tara, Tarapiro? Tarapia. Tarapia. I would say something like that. Uh, uh, yeah, it's something like that. And it's in the Island Courier Airways livery. A really nice paint job. What do you reckon? Yeah, I love the details of it. Uh, no question. And it looks very realistic. Yeah, the gradient. Like, <laughs> like I've not seen the gradient paint yeah. job and that, like, come into a point paint job on top of it as well really really clever and it must have taken like hours <laughs> to get it right when i first saw it it was uh, it's very chunky but uh, I, I feel like he designed the cockpit or the bow or what you okay. saw the front part of yeah. it like really aerodynamic and i love that because it yeah absolutely i feel like yeah I mean, you know it's I mean. taking design notes from like an old Boeing flying boat or something like that, like the Lestrade Cruiser, like a really round, blunt front that, yeah, like you say, screams speed and aerodynamics, but also interacts really well with the water. Look how fast this thing goes, by the way. Really, really impressive. Now, he's built this to be a sort of a modern uh, flying boat. So whilst it does take design notes from these older flying boats, it is built for the modern day and in a world where flying boats still exist and I really appreciate that creativity because that's really really cool. I agree. The exterior, really impressive. Did you like the interior on it Bibba? Yeah I did, I really did. Uh, uh, but I have to say I was more impressed of the looks of it and the functionality. Yeah yeah. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of displays, like small displays, so yeah. It, I'm probably more like, uh, I like buttons, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm the same. I prefer it all analog. Like, the screens overwhelm me quite quite cr quickly. <laughs> but we'll just step out of the cockpit and go to the rest of the plane and then I'll calm down in the kitchen. <laughs> I love these little seats, they're pretty cool. I did find a couple of the overhead lights didn't work, but we'll let them pass. There's a lot of them to wire up. Yeah. So this is top notch. Really, really good. Impression. Lots of consideration put into like all sorts of things, isn't there? Like, I didn't, I didn't even cross my mind that flying boats would have lifeboats in them until uh, that frog Curtis put them in. A couple of sleeper cabins, 
couple of toilets in there and a really really big cargo bit as well which makes this plane actually useful in the world of Stormworks so goodness me got an elevator <laughs> yeah, well, that's it and you've got the action shot it's hard to film these in single player guys you've got to appreciate the cinematography look I even got the cabinet open opening now how does it land does it smash into the water or does it gracefully glide let's find out oh it doesn't want to come down Oh, hey. pretty smooth. Hey. As smooth as you can get in Stormworks, pretty much. You can fuel it up here. Look at all these considerations given to it, like practical features. And the door, look at that. Oh my god, I love that. And even a little bow hatch. <laughs> Towing. There we go. Look at these scores. Really, really, really high. My goodness me, I think we might have a new leader here. There we go, 105. It's really hard to find fault in it, isn't it? Yeah, real and nice job on it. Fantastic entrance. Right, our penultimate contestant is Cool G2007 with the CG62 Dragonfly. Now, you might have seen this on the workshop already. Hopefully, you have because it is a quality JSI product. Please download and subscribe. Um, this one has been built by Cool G. Now, Viva, what's your first impression looking at this? Uh, it reminds me of like, uh, like I don't know the models, but like, uh, like uh, he did a recreation of or draw some inspiration mm. from early uh, watercraft water planes mm. that had the motors on top of the wings. Definitely. And I have to say, my favorite part of it is it, it's uh, the size of it. It isn't like big huge or or too small it's just like i mean it's perfect it really is i mean it's worth saying that this one and the, the craft before them both have folding wings so that they can be spawned in um the regular medium boat uh spawn point so that's really really good because you can spawn these in vanilla games and still have that nice impressive wingspan and spawn them on the water and like you say the size is really really good like it's not too big, but somehow he squeezed so many features in, hasn't he? Yeah, he has, so the functionality of it is really great for a watercraft like this. And uh, I also have to say the color scheme is just on spot. Absolutely, it's perfect, especially with those uh, Union flags. <laughs> Love a bit of <laughs> British engineering, can't go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never mind that this is the only plane I actually crashed. <laughs> <laughs> we'll ignore that, we'll ignore that. Look at this cockpit, really, really nice functionality, fabulous. It has a really cool um, autopilot system and the, the the way in which you refill your water tanks and things like that, it's all really, really well thought out. Lots of lovely details in this midsection. I love it. I love how he used the veggies to mm. to sort of uh, follow the structure of the, of the plane. That's it, you feel like you're in a plane when you are in the plane, like it's not like you say, it's just a blocky corridor. It is well considered and really, really well put together. Like there's not a single Sorry. bit that stands out out of place. Is there? It all, all fits in just right. Exactly. It's it's plain, you know. So I'm I'm really impressed how much took everything into it with it. If you we take the size of the plane to yeah, look at them shots, like you would not believe like this plane is only, you know, as short as it is. Really, really cool. Right, scores for Cool G's Dragonfly are really, really high. Look at this. Again, we might have a new leader. 108, I reckon that might be the top of our charts for, uh, for today, top of our charts. Yeah, amazing, good work. Cool yeah. And look, it lands smoothly too, you can't go wrong. Now, when we said aquatic aircraft, is this what you expected, Bibba? Not at all. <laughs> I think this is kind of pushing the definition to an extreme. This is from Axel X and he's just called it a flying schooner because that's what it is. It's a ship in the sky and somehow it floats with witchcraft and black magic and it flies really well. Cruising along here at 52 knots if I remember right. And yet it feels like when you're stood on it, feels like it stood still because it's so massive and so packed full of details. What do you think of the exterior of it, Bibber? Oh, dude, it's a lot to take in. Uh, You're telling me, I, I had have... to film it for like 25 minutes. <laughs> it's ridiculous. 
but I have to say, uh, I'm really impressed. It, this is it's not just a creation, it's uh, art for many reasons. It really so. is. It's like such. It is, it's just demonstrates a mastery. Like, this is the, the peak of Stormworks design, isn't it? Like, using the tools. I yeah. I could never build anything like this. <laughs> exactly. Out of my mind. It is. I only build recreations. So that's my thing. But this mm. is just like, yeah. Okay, we're gonna put. So creative. Yeah, we're gonna put like Pirates of Caribbean into Star Wars. Boom, what do you get? That's it. Well, it is Treasure Planet meets Sinbad meets, you know, like you say, Pirates of the Caribbean. God, it's absolutely. <laughs> mad and I love it like it's so impressive and it's hard to find fault just from these first impressions like obviously we'll go through and look at all the individual details but there's a there's a lot to touch on and I think you know if if someone can build this <laughs> in a what is this a search and rescue game and what have we built <laughs> a massive flying gooner but I have to say have to say the sales how we manage the sales mm. i love that it's, and how they react they, i think they they change depending on your your throttle and, and the lift you want and things like that like dynamic and they move in a really nice way i wish we had actual sales hint hint stormworks devs but they look fantastic they look like I think the reason why they look fantastic is because this is such a fantasy creation that they don't have to look exactly like sales. Like it's true. you can imagine that there's some sort of high tech propulsion technology that involves, you know, those concertinas of of sail surfaces. And I think it just fits the aesthetic of the boat really, really well. Exactly. It's kind of like a steampunk, cyberpunk, all everything put together, isn't it really? Well I suppose mostly steampunk. <laughs> really really impressive uh, I think the guy is from Portugal so mm. it's a ship nation so absolutely look at all these details like you can see the wood although he's not used obviously you can't use paint blocks on these surfaces he's still introduced texture by introducing different color woods the same on the deck like he saved resources by not using paint blocks he's just painted different planks here here's your cockpit by the way this is where you stand to command this beast of a ship a lovely analog interface just like we like with lots of dials and, and gauges that lovely compass there so your navigator can stand just before you oh this look is, at that here we go into the interior this is the main saloon beautiful windows deliberately made with small panes lovely piano what do you think of this inside oh man it's just a mind-boggling man it's i have to say it's irritating because I, I I want to be able to do this. <laughs> I think the, the message that we should be giving our, our, our viewers is that all, all Axel has that we don't have is, what, a couple of thousand hours more and a lot more time to put into these things. You have a life, Axel? Uh, <laughs> yeah, apparently not. Apparently not. <laughs> but, you know, it's worth it because, like you say, this is, this is art and there's so many features it's impossible for us to cover it all in this video so check it out on the workshop and there's plenty of ships like in in this theme that i'm sure he's produced or others have produced and and they are a spectacular side of the stormworks community which is unlike anything else i really enjoy this watching this because it's it's amazing and i also appreciate how much work he he, he did into this uh in yeah when it comes to this community challenge it's just amazing to watch and uh, i have a suspicion that in the future it will be difficult to to give them give them points yeah definitely difficult to find to find fault we are a lovely shower block really really incredible yes. like so many details just a nice place to be and, and i'm filming this and all the while this ship is traveling along at 52 knots in the sky so slowly making its way to the mainland 
and it, it's so stable and so reliable that I've just obviously walked away from the bridge and it's just handling itself, you know? It's flying itself. I can come down and interact with my imaginary passengers. Look at this captain's cabin or, or master's cabin. I can't remember which it is, but... Yeah. A bathtub, well, look. To... Yeah, yeah, look at that. <laughs> I don't see any bathtubs in Stormworks, but there you go. And look at this sci-fi. Here's where the cyberpunk comes in. Incredible engine design. Obviously, it absolutely does nothing at all, but aesthetically, incredible looking. All this storage, really well imagined. There's even a little airlock down here, so that when you are in the water, which we will test out later, here he comes. Does it float, do you reckon? Of course, it's a boat. There we are. A ship. It's a boat, it's a plane, it's a house. I'd happily live my life on here. And does it land on land as well? It's got little legs. It's an amphibious flying boat. Look at that. Stable as anything. Here are the scores. Hard to, to knock any points off. My goodness me. Really, really incredible. 111. Look at that. Now that is our final contestant. Let's take a look back over every entry before we come to our scores. Now, if you want to get involved with JSI's Community Challenges, please join us on Discord. We host these pretty much every month. Make sure to have your say on what you'd like to see for our next competition theme and just come and hang out with us a lot. There's a couple of hundred of us on that server now, isn't there? So lots of people to, to seek advice from or to, to share your designs with. So come on down. And come on down and check it out. <laughs> Check it out. Uh, like and subscribe. Come and join the Discord. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, here we are. Look, the amount, like the, di what do you reckon of the, what do you think of the diversity in, in terms of the different approaches people have had to this competition? Oh, I wish I could and have a good answer to that because, again, I'm more uh, like a boat guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel more like. Uh, rookie when it comes to flying vessels because mm. uh, it's a new thing for me but I have to say I'm oh my god I'm so impressed I've never built anything a flying uh, vessel before in Zoneworks I have That's to say yeah. kudos to everyone dude absolutely a lot Amazing. of these people these aircraft like particularly with some of the helicopters and some of the, the other planes that these might be their first attempt at a flying aircraft so the fact that they've done it for this competition and managed to produce something that works really really impressive so well done to everyone involved now the tense music i think is about to start which means it's time for us to bring up the leaderboard and figure out who's won jsi's third community challenge okay so before we get to our leaderboard jsi like to award the Board's Choice Award for a builder who's demonstrated some fantastic skills and though they might not be topping our leaderboard today, Ira Fader has really demonstrated a fantastic level of ability in delivering their cute, really really cute little helicopter and I really enjoyed seeing that Ira so well done, keep improving those skills, me and Bibba are really big fans of yours so keep on going. Now the final scores, here they come. Dun, dun, dun. First place is Axel X. Now, if you remember, Axel X won our last competition, so he retains his title. Second place is Cool G with 108 points, and third, that Frog Curtis. Look how close it was at the top, is that? Yeah, it's really close. Really close. Only six points between third and first, so really massive congratulations to you three. Sergeant Yambag again, really high score, breaking that 100 margin, and Tales, Tails, not that far behind. Congratulations to all of you. Gibba, any last, any last words? So, the winner, if you see this, DM me, I will give you the prize. Fabulous. Well, thank you all for participating. Like I said, if you want to join in with JSI's activities, please come and join us on the Discord. If you have liked this video and you are still watching, press that like button, subscribe to our channel. We're professional YouTubers now. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining me, Biba. Yeah, thank you. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> and we will see you guys next time.